Picking the right hull for an AX ship is entirely dependent on what kind of AX player you are, and how engaged you want to be with interceptors, scouts, support, or solo play. Everybody will have their own take on which hull is best for what gameplay, so keep in mind that these are far from the only options. But are excellent starting points from which players can learn the ropes and develop builds more fitted to their playstyles. Starting on the bottom end of the budget scale, we have the trusty Viper 3. This is what I consider to be the entry point for building ships to kill Thargoids. While it's possible to outfit something as small as a Sidewinder for the task, using anything smaller than a Viper involves sacrifices that put a lot of emphasis on skill with little room for mistakes. The Viper is a great starting point for players interested in testing the waters of AX combat without committing too much time or engineering efforts. Though this ship is best used as part of a team strategy, or at least with other ships available to help draw fire. Viper pilots need to be comfortable making tight, reflex-based maneuvers, diving in and out of engagements as part of a team. The ship's engines and weapons are purpose-built for the task, with a control profile that is easy to learn, and a hardpoint layout that can deliver surprising amounts of damage for its size. The Viper does come with trade-offs, the most important being fragility. Even when fully engineered, a Viper 3 will wither under sustained attack, placing an emphasis on mobility and good line selection. It's important to get in and out of interceptor attack range quickly, avoiding damage as much as possible. While this is achievable with flight assist on, it gets even easier with flight assist off. Carrying tremendous momentum into tight hairpin turns deep enough to cause pilot blackouts. Being so small, the Viper lacks enough module space to function as a good multi-role ship, so expect to pick one main focus. Keep in mind that small hulls also have lower heat capacity, so weapons with a high thermal load affect this ship more than larger vessels. Care should be taken when selecting Guardian weapons, as the capacitor often has more headroom than thermal limits can withstand. And with only two utility mounts, there aren't a lot of opportunities to quickly reject excess heat. The Viper's speed, maneuverability, and tiny cross-section allow it to excel as an anti-Thargon swarm ship. It's one of the few ships that can kite incoming fire from Thargons while still applying a devastating dual flak salvo at close range. The Viper can effectively neutralize smaller swarms by itself, both outturning and out-accelerating them, picking apart Thargons like a dolphin in a school of fish. This allows larger, slower, flak-equipped ships to provide assistance where it counts, or to focus on killing the interceptor itself. With teamwork, even a Hydra swarm can be isolated and neutralized quickly. Rapidly eliminating the swarm is important when using the Viper against Thargons, because a large swarm going suicidal is this ship's critical weakness. Having a small cross-section is great for evading Thargoid energy weapons, but it also packs key internal modules close together, making the ship extremely vulnerable to Thargoid explosive and caustic damage. Dirty drive tuning is essential for survival in this ship, though enhanced performance thrusters are not recommended because the hull and AX modules are generally too heavy for these thrusters to make a real difference. The Viper also works well as an interceptor-focused ship. It's fast enough to outrun Thargoid interceptors and the swarm when needed, and it still packs in enough weapons to kill Thargoid hearts quickly. The Viper's S-tier acceleration and maneuvering enable it to keep closer to interceptors than any other ship, making it ideal for collecting detailed AX scans. Remaining within swatting distance of an interceptor is dangerous, so it's best to time your attacks in coordination with other ships, coming in with a specific objective and then departing once that objective is accomplished to cool off and set up another run. If you're planning to exert a heart, fall back once the heart is exerted. If you're heart sniping, wait for a heart to exert, come in, kill the heart, and then retreat. This helps avoid drawing aggression and manages your heat load. If the Thargoid turns to face you, fall back immediately. Your shield will only withstand a couple volleys. The Alliance Chieftain was purpose-built by Lacon under Alliance Commission to fight Thargoids. This agile medium ship pairs excellent speed and maneuverability with a sturdy hull, abundant hardpoints, and aggressive boost profile. It's fast enough to brawl with Thargon swarms and strong enough to trade punches with interceptors. The Chieftain excels in all things combat, 
outruns what it can't kill, and is cheap enough to be an accessible step up from the Viper or Cobra 3. With a large hull and bigger heat vents, the Chieftain has enough heat capacity to handle Guardian weapons and enough capacitor strength to drive the most demanding AX loadouts. With its two size 3 hardpoints, mounted at centerline, above and behind the cockpit, the Chieftain is able to keep its highest damage on target at the closest ranges, even when using fixed mounts, making aiming more manageable with less effort. Chieftains are strong hull tanks, so they lend well to shieldless, cold-orbiting builds that allow for caustic damage to be quickly and repeatedly cooked off when needed. A common sight within the AXI, this ship earned its stripes quickly as a strong solo fighter, and remains a top choice for AX operations, though it does come with some caveats. The abundance of military-only optional internals are what gave the Chieftain its strong hull. But this comes at the cost of general optional internals, of which it has few compared to most other medium ships. What general optional internals it does have are adequate for itself and little more, making the Chieftain a poor support ship. While sturdy, the Chieftain does tend to get worn down over long engagements, often needing mid-fight repair or weapon resupply when fighting Basilisk or Medusa interceptors. Blown canopies are a common occurrence, so A-rated life support comes highly recommended, as does one small AFM unit for canopy repairs, or at least one friend with a repair limpet. The Chieftain tends to drift in hairpin maneuvering, making it harder to keep the Thargon swarm sighted in, though it does better than any other medium ship, but only has a single size 2 hardpoint, requiring pilots to sacrifice a size 3 mount for dual flak, sacrificing a lot of damage against scouts and interceptors for greater effectiveness against swarms. This is a trade-off that few pilots I'm aware of choose to take, since the Chieftain can adequately defend itself from the swarm with a single flak launcher. The Chieftain's greatest strength lies in its anti-interceptor capability, so this is where the majority of builds place their emphasis, though the Chieftain is an extremely capable scout hunter. Shard cannons make for excellent general-purpose AX weapons, able to deal with everything Thargoid except for the swarm. Since they are easy to use and can be equipped on turrets, shard cannons are a top choice for newer pilots looking to fill the two large hardpoints on the Chieftain's back. Dirty drives are a critical upgrade to chase, being essential for the Chieftain to boost at speed sufficient to keep pace with the battle and outrun threats. Armor engineering is likewise important, and one of the longer grinds to fully acquire. Weapon loadouts are diverse, with main damage provided by the two size 3 hardpoints, which tend to define the ship's primary focus. Undersized Gauss cannons for hard sniping, or size 3 guardian weapons for hard exertion damage, are common. The Crate Mark II is the undisputed king of multi-role AX combat, trading raw hull durability for the best overall loadout flexibility of all medium ships. The crate can be reconfigured to fit just about any AX role, making it the best choice for pilots who only want one AX ship. Leveraging its mid-tier jump range, the crate is also capable of operating effectively without the support of a fleet carrier, especially once engineered, providing for rapid and flexible redeployment with minimal logistical overhead. The crate hits hard against interceptors and scouts, able to act effectively in heart exertion or heart destruction with top-end speeds fast enough to outrun caustic missiles and escape lopsided engagements. The crate can be configured as a hull or shield tank, while still packing enough spare power for weapons to be swapped around on the fly, allowing it to change roles with a quick stop at any dock that can receive stored modules and is equipped for outfitting ships. Crate hardpoint configuration is strongly biased towards big damage with most builds equipping two flak launchers on the medium hardpoints and then loading the large hardpoints with whatever weapon combination suits their style. Triple Goss is achievable for heart snipers, with the ship able to just barely manage the heat load. Size 3 Guardian weapons fit readily, with a capacitor that can drive just about anything after engineering. Where the crate falls short is on maneuverability. It understeers in just about any direction, even when flying at its lethargic optimal throttle range. Turning flight assist off makes attitude adjustments feel snappy, but actual shifts in vector are slow to follow the nose. This makes the crate a poor choice as a dedicated anti-Thargon ship. With dual flak equipped, 
The crate can effectively defend itself from the swarm, but it won't be able to keep pace with a swarm that decides to leave for other targets. Despite its weaker armor, the crate is still heavy, making acceleration and deceleration slower, with a much softer boost profile compared to the Chieftain, though it is more energy efficient. It's hard to drain the engine capacitor before engineering, with capacitor charge enhancement making it more forgiving than any other ship besides the Python. This is good because spamming the boost button is the only effective way to change directions in a fight. High straight line speed does make the crate a useful support ship, able to fit limpets and cargo space large enough to be effective in that role. It's also capable of deploying ship launch fighters, which are a useful distraction when fighting in solo instances, drawing off Thargons or scout ships to clear attack runs against an interceptor, though ship launch fighters do still cause networking issues that make them unusable in group play. While the crate is more expensive, and can be a tall task to build, with a long engineering grind required, it's worth the effort if you enjoy fighting Thargoids, but requires some commitment to get properly set up. This ship works best for pilots who only want a single AX ship, as the core and optional outfitting don't need to change when the weapons swap out, so long as the ship is built with a full-sized engineered reactor and capacitor for extra power overhead. Large ship applications in AX combat are something for the late stage player, with any of the big three being capable of high damage and high endurance builds. I don't recommend that any first time AX commander try and build one of these craft, since the effort and time required to build them is much higher. It should also be noted that, at time of writing, AX weapon offerings for large ships are limited, requiring commanders to undersize multiple hardpoint positions on board, in addition to filling extra weapon spaces with non-AX variations, since all ships are still limited to a maximum of four experimental weapons. Since there are likely to be some late-stage big spenders, with enough work already done to crack a large ship out quickly, I figure it's a good idea to cover at least one large hull. Of the available large ship offerings, the Federal Corvette is my personal favorite, offering the best armor configuration, highest maneuverability, sturdy shields, and abundant optional internals. The Corvette is the most flexible of the large ships. It has one of the highest thermal capacities in the game, making it more difficult to overheat, while simultaneously offering one of the best weapon capacitors available giving it ample time on target damage. The Corvette's nose tracks interceptors responsibly, and its engines offer enough boost to traverse combat areas at a reasonable pace, with less drift than the other platforms. Lending itself to well-balanced defensive builds, leveraging both shields and hull, the Corvette can endure incredible abuse, drawing fire away from other attackers and helping anchor fights with faster interceptors by keeping the enemy focused on it. The Corvette is also one of the best support ships in the game, period. With three size 7 internals, the Corvette can support a universal limpet controller and two shield cell banks, with plenty of room for shields, cargo space for limpet drones, and other utility systems. There is no role this ship can't fill. Though it does struggle with Thargon swarms, it can reverse away fast enough to keep them sighted and do some meaningful damage. The Corvette isn't the fastest of the big three, so it can't keep up with any of the interceptors should their aggression be drawn away. It also struggles to avoid the Thargoid lightning attack, requiring deft handling and foresight when setting up a run. Jump range, even after engineering, is pathetic, making the ship a chore to fly long distances. As a result, the Corvette is best used with a fleet carrier or a second travel ship to help manage the logistics. The Corvette is difficult to acquire, sitting at the end of a long federal rank grind, and holding a firm position as the second most expensive hull in the game. If you do lose it, rebuy costs can track into the high 30 million range. Its massive cross-section means, like with other large ships, that the risk and consequence of collisions are higher for other ships in the instance. Accidentally ramming an allied commander can result in explosion and death, so caution is advised in large engagements, especially where small ships are involved. Despite these issues, the Federal Corvette makes for an excellent damage tank and close-in brawler, driving in hard to exert Thargoid hearts and then assisting other vessels in destroying them. 
coordinated builds as part of a team strategy can readily take on the toughest Thargoid interceptors, with a corvette acting as the core anchor, both supporting its wing and providing bulk damage to help press an attack to its fullest effect. AX Combat is a significant step up in difficulty from normal PvE, and can be intimidating for the inexperienced. Despite the ongoing war, Thargoid Combat has never been more accessible. Station Defense Combat Zones provide for additional NPC support that can draw fire, and quick access to station repairs that make logistics easier, keeping ships in the fight for longer, and lowering overall risk for players undertaking the challenge. There are additional non-combat roles that can support the war effort without the need for direct engagement with Thargoid Interceptors. I can do a video on these roles if there's enough interest. Let me know in the comments if that's a topic you want covered. The Anti-Xeno Initiative has a lot of resources on specific ship builds, strategies, and mechanics posted to their website linked below. The holes I recommended here are based on my own experience with these ships, both in and out of AX combat scenarios, and differ from AXI recommendations at times. If you're not sure what to do or where to go, their website provides detailed builds and strategies for all Thargoid combat scenarios. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.